It is a good morning to you. Welcome to Asaki Online. This is the Breakfast Club. My name is Zenzele Ndebele. Today in our program, we'll be looking at the issue of water in Bulawayo. Uh, in the past year, we've had uh, serious uh, water challenges in Bulawayo, mainly because of uh, the drought. And we've seen uh, some suburbs going for months uh, without water, and even the water shedding was up to uh, once a week uh, for water. Recently, we had uh, had good rains, but still we've continued uh, uh, to maintain the tight water schedule. So people are starting to ask questions. Why are we having uh, water shedding when we still have water? Or when the rain has uh, actually been good and dams are filling up? We know our dams are not yet 100% full, but at least there are significant inflows. So today, the City Council will be explaining to us why we still have water challenges and also looking at uh, how the year looks like and uh, the next few months and the next few weeks. We know they've been commissioning new equipment and they've told us that the water shedding uh, is going to ease uh, beginning uh, sometime in the next few days and we hope the situation is going to improve. So without wasting time, let's hear from the city engineer uh, what the situation is like. We are at... Uh Criterion raw water reservoir. Uh, some four weeks ago, you could actually walk across the reservoir on foot. It was virtually empty. Uh, the water that is here has been coming through the trials on the new equipment as we try to commission it. Uh, the mayor has announced that uh, the first two pumps of the new flossive equipment have finally been commissioned and uh, we have been progressively pumping uh, into this raw water and also boosting uh, the treatment uh, in the criterion treatment works. Uh, the flossive pumps were installed starting from 2017 and commissioned first in December 2020. However, due to a technicality on the check valves, the system could not operate. The contractor has finally implemented the first stage of the solution, where is currently running with two pumps, one from Nema and another one from Fenil. Uh, there are six pumps, three in Nema and three in Fenil, that pump water to this place. Uh, the funding of the project for the flow safe was under the Africa Development Bank funding uh, through the government of Zimbabwe. And uh, this project is one of the first projects in the country where the city was given the implementing status uh, of the implementing agency for the project, meaning we were given the authority to design, uh, advertise, procure contractors, award and commission the projects while the bank actually provided oversight uh, throughout the project. Uh, the system, like we are saying, is now coming into commission it is a system that will operate almost remotely uh, unless there is need for any intervention. The system can actually operate, uh, can be operated even if you are not at the station. Uh, as we speak, the contractor has been training our staff and now he monitors the system while he's in his hotel. Uh, to see whether our staff are actually doing the rightful things in terms of uh, operation. Uh, the coming in of the flow safe uh, equipment means that the city is now getting an additional 55 megalitres of water per day. 
that will increase our output to almost about 145 uh, megaliters per day across the the treatment uh, processes, which is uh, uh, the raw water from I mean the clear water from Criterion, uh, the clear water from Nema, and the underground water from uh, Nyamandovu Aquifer. Uh, from that, the city, with effect from today, the 8th of February, will be relaxing the water shedding to a 144 hour shedding, meaning consumers will be able to get water at least twice in a week. Uh, this allows the city to gradually build up its reservoirs, and this one included, uh, to levels where even if there is interruption of power, at least the water continues to flow to the residents. Uh, it is our target that by the end of this week, uh, we will then reduce further the water shedding uh, to 72 hours per week, starting on the uh, 15th of February 2021. Uh, we anticipate that the final solution on the rehabilitation of the, rather on the replacement of the faulty valves will be completed by the 15th of uh, March 2021. It is from that time that we project that the city will be able to provide water 24-7, uh, 365 days per year and uh, retain the status of being uh, the best city in terms of water delivery. We just one of the three cities in the country that maintain a 24-hour water provision. Over the past six years, we've been running SLB, albeit for the challenges that we experienced in 2019 and 2020, which we are now saying we've overcome those challenges with the inflows that have been received in the dams. Our dams are currently carrying about 53 percent uh, and are able to stretch us to the end of the 2022 water, I mean rainy season. However, the city will review its water rationing regime at the end of the March of March when the rainy season officially comes to an end. Uh, with the anticipated or projected reinstatement of the water supplies, uh, consumers will now be asked to closely monitor their consumption uh, because the water rationing that is in force will start to kick in and there are penalties and higher tariffs for using a lot of water. Uh, we will be publishing the reminder in terms of uh, uh, the limits that are provided for the different uh, user categories. But it is important that consumers start watching their consumption. And uh, our target when we are doing 144, 174 hour shedding is that we should consume on average 130 megaliters per day. So if consumers stay within that amount even in the coming next week, we think we can gradually improve in terms of availability of water to all uh, the consumers almost on a continuous basis or on a reduced scale of shedding. Uh, having said that, because of the current uh, challenges that we experience in terms of our plumbers being busy, mainly opening and closing valves, uh, the city has experienced the increase in leakages. Uh, as we stand, we have got more than 2,000 leaks that have been located, and that obviously will create a challenge as we go forward. 
in terms of that now the leaks needs to be attended uh, in a more with urgency uh, and for us to be able to attend to the leaks with urgency we urge the residents to also play their part uh, playing their part as citizens of the city we expect the residents at least to pay their current bills those that are owing more than 30 day bills and those that are owing more than 30 day bills they should try to make arrangements so that they are able to clear their uh, debts and actually provide the resources that are necessary for us to be able to now deal with the outstanding leaks and also for the general maintenance of the equipment. Uh, with increased water supply, we anticipate that there will naturally be increased sewerage blockages initially, mainly because the sewer that has been in the pipes in some cases have already caked and we urge residents whenever we get supplies to still do the big flush in the mornings. We all try to flush so that we can create the cleansing veracity that is required on the days that water will be resupplied. Again, if residents also uh, come on board in meeting their bills timelessly, uh, we believe that will assist the SOAR teams to appropriately procure the necessary space and materials for them to support uh, the teams that are actually doing the SOAR clearing system. Uh, at this stage, I would like to thank the residents for their patience over the period. Uh, nine, 2020 was a challenge uh, because of raw water shortages. Uh, we now believe we have, do have sufficient raw water uh, to stretch us to the next rainy season, which is uh, 2022. But we still urge residents to exercise uh, care in conservation, uh, just like we have practiced, practiced in the outer years. I think we, we, as a city and as a country, we really need to invest in our infrastructure. Some of these uh, structures that we're using, the dams, the infrastructure, the system, was left by the colonial government. And obviously, uh, the time the dams were built and the equipment was uh, uh, installed, we had fewer people, and uh, it's every piece of equipment has a lifetime, has a lifetime or a lifespan. And our dams are also uh, don't match the population. The last dam was constructed I think in the 70s and our population was less than 300,000 people. So it is very important for the government of Zimbabwe to invest in more dams. It is also important for the city of Flower to actually have future plans to say in the next five years, in the next 10 years, in the next 20 years, how is the water supply going to look like? So I find it quite you know, not uh, interesting to be talking about water challenges in the 21st century and being excited that today we have water in our suburb because we are supposed to be having water every day. It should not be news that water is coming at 7 o'clock and I hope our city fathers are going to seriously look at the water challenges that uh, the city is facing and have permanent solutions. My name is Anzele Ndewele. Till we meet again tomorrow, have a good day.